Yehova Malak, Olam Olamad, Yehova Malak, Yami Ragis. The Megalo Gai of Yahweh Lilion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inner great word of truth. Glory be to my Ave Sitkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, for faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory in order to realize and understand every breath on this life as long as we have breath in our nostrils has to be taken care in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit so that we need to be more than overcomers, as the word of the Lord our God teaches to us in Romans 8.32. With Christ we can do many things, and we are more than conquerors. The great thing this world should know is yet, as being a Christian on this life, the dunamis power wherewith we have been given, in that great power, the authority of exousia, and manifesting of that power through Iskun's strength and making known this world to realize what is the Kratos power in the Energia, the operative power of Lord God the Holy Spirit through His Word in us. Under such great power, the world is yet to know because Christ our Lord our God hasn't given just for us our eternal life, but also he has given us the power that is, he says in Ephesians 3, Ephesians 1 as well, to be strengthened in your inner man by that power which has been called the exousia authority to show what mannerism of persons we are that those who have this true eternal life. This is the power what we need to manifest to this world. It is not just coming to Christ in the standards of realizing that we have only eternal life, but the power of everything has given to us. That power, he says, in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, Go and make disciples of all the nations, because the authority has been given to me, and I am giving you the same authority. The same thing he trialed that authority in Luke chapter 10, when he was choosing those apostles, or his disciples later became apostles. Stating to the point, the power has been given to me on this heaven as well as the earth. And they said, they saw Satan falling like a lightning star. And he said, do not rejoice just over that, but rejoice that your names are written in this great eternal life. And those who possess this eternal life, we have to be more than conquerors. We do not worry what the world is going to look unto us. We do not worry what the world can make a damage unto us because we have been stated for us in Psalms 34, in verse number 9, while we honor Lord God in this world, we shall lack no thing, or we shall not have any impoverishment. It is a complete satisfaction of Lord God for us. Therefore, he uses the word, my grace is sufficient for you. And those who truly fear Lord God, he says, there is nothing of an impoverishment or like a poor you are to be. We are rich in Christ, though you may not have your material possession, but yet he says in 34.9 of Psalms, you shall have this, 
you shall pro you shall have to the standards that you can lead a life that is absolutely content about anything else on this earth so he uses for us to teach these lessons so that under that great power the world is yet to know what is it we have been given in psalms 23 one we read for us to understand we shall not like any good thing therefore there the word he used you shall not be taken to be a lower standard in Psalms 34:9 the word is not the same sakar what we use there it has been used over here for your poor standards of life what you think you shall not like that so as a true believer in Christ the riches given to us through Christ we are having the pleasure of faultum privileges in this church age which is far above and far superior besides just having this eternal life he says it is not that you need to manifest the power given to you and what is that making disciples of all the nations for well, that cause we were reading yesterday in Matthew 7 in verse number 5 and the word of the Lord of God taught for us very clearly and specifically first remove that which is in your eyes as a beam log then you may try to remove the shrivel or the things pertaining to mort or chaff and what is that first we need to take up our log there is nothing but carrying your cross every day and following my Christ and becoming his disciple day by day and when we have been using that you will come to know when you have been sustaining in that that you will realize there is nothing of a damage that this world can ever make to us or there is nothing of a damage wherewith the world would ever think that they can provide for us because we know very well from the words gabatha used for us in john 1913 where pontius pilate sat on that judgment seat and that judgment seat of payment was called in hebrew gabatha it's meant to say elevation to be on a higher side and in john 1911 and following we read when pontius pilate said i have the power to release you and i have the power to set you free that's what he says do you not know that i have the power to crucify you and the power to release you and yet lord god the father says you have no power to you at all except it be given to you from above but today for us this power is been given therefore for the taunt in luke chapter 4 verses 6 through 8 when satan said i have all the exclusive authority i will give you the glory of this world christ our lord our god did not bow down to it neither he worshiped to it but rather he said you shall worship only lord god the father in heaven because he is the creator and when satan was asking this it was just a creation it was just a creature even the same manner you point us pilot being the standards of creature is thinking that he can give that is having the power either to release my christ or not but in isaiah 45 verses 22 and 23 which is the same comparison of philippians 2 verses 5 through 11 we read every knee shall bow and is said that i swear and in the hebrew it meant to say eight times repetition of the same pro- repetition of the same promise or command eight times he said i swear 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 seven times the word that is gone out of me which shall not return back but the time will come when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus is the christ my lord my rock and today's christendom as well you will find in the present time in the contemporary even no matter how our unbelievers they may be appointed as kings or rulers to this particular state including this pontius pilate of fulfilling romans 13:1 if they would follow the principles of my lord and savior jesus christ they know very well what benefit they have but benefit only for the short time on this earth of this pilgrimage trip but we have a benefit to follow that lord god for eternal life and the power given to us to release or to bind whatever it could be on this earth so that the same thing could be released and bound in the heaven we have been given such kind of a great power for us we know that we are having eternal life or do you know that do you have your eternal life that's the problem in our pulpits today they're not assured when we have been called by faith alone in Christ alone not by works lest any man should boast there are of the conscious being cleared out to have a full assurance of understanding that we are more than overcomers by faith alone in Christ alone they haven't been there under the convicting ministry of lord god the holy spirit as john 16 7 and 8 and 9 and 10 and love and teaches to us when that word for aglanco is been used for reproving ministry of lord god the holy spirit if you have been convicted of your fault rather be reproved when the word of the lord our god says why you are having little faith 
in spite of the disturbances in the nature. He says, more than that nature, I am here and they were shocked to look. In the previous chapter, we find so many people being fed when he prayed to God the Father and now they have a storm in the sea and they feared. They don't have Christ in their life. Likewise, if we have little faith, not even a faith, which could be counted to the mustard seed, how could Lord God fight your battle? Do you think you are bold enough to stand before His presence? Do you think you are bold enough to exercise this power given to you? Do you think you are bold enough at least to realize that you are a heavenly citizen enjoying eternal life and the world is yet to know not only just the eternal life we enjoy but the power given to us has to be manifested on this earth. And that's the problem with us. We are thinking if anyone could sit on a point of a height elevation called as Gabatha they are really worth enough to judge. But the word of the Lord of our God says for us, the rulers of this world, including Pontus Pilate, the one who was great monarch during that time, has to give an account wherewith they wielded their authority. Therefore, they know when they give that information or the standards of account in the presence of God the Father for the judgment, when we read in Revelation 20 verses 11 through 15, Anyone in every way, in whichever manner they have been taken out from the book of works, they will stand up. And then he says, they will know and they will humble themselves. That though he was been on this earth as a highest evolution, so they will confess that Christ our Lord of God is the King of kings and Lord of lords, the glory of God the Father. And that's what my Christ, my Lord, my rock was and he is and he will. Thus he says, why do you worry about this world? Thus he says, the power given to you is something far superior. There is nothing they can come against you. You may think they are trying to make up your life to become a hell. Don't worry, you are being given the word of the Lord of our God. Therefore we read that in Psalm 119 in verse number 23. Even the chief of the rulers could sit and talk about you or think about you. You just go on to meditate upon the choke. The Hebrew word is very important over there for us. It is nothing but the prescription and the demands of Bible doctrine. If you go to a doctor, he has given you some prescription. You need to follow that carefully along with the instructions, isn't it? In the same manner over here, we find the prescriptions given to you. And these prescriptions you need to take up every day and do the will of God the Father. That's what he's teaching for us. Prescriptions. Choke. It is not the statutes. And what does he put over there? He uses the word that I have been meditating. I put in my mind the thoughts of you, Lord. Though the enemies could sit, though the enemies could be along with the chiefest, fallest sinner, which is nothing but Satan in its pride. Though they may sit and they may love to analyze about me, I haven't worried. What for I need to worry? I have only one thing to worry, to meditate upon thy precepts or to meditate upon the conditions, what you demand. The failure in the present Christendom is that they are not able to honor Lord God in this world. That's what he says in Psalms 34 in verse number 9. The fear of Yahweh, the word over there is 3372, the first fear. While you are here on this earth, if you truly fear Lord God, not fearing the world, but rather Lord God, you will not fear anyone. Because you know very well, you have been here to impress Lord God, not your own human excreta or urine. What do they have the best? What do they have the people to look to the best? What do you will look? Do you find any other species apart from human beings on this earth? No, you cannot look. So you look each other face. The same things what you have, even the same things he has or she has, except some abnormalities in the behavioral patterns or including the physical structures or physical fingers or hands or broken testicles or something like that, whatever you think, hunchback or leprosy. You'll find deformation over here. But you'll find him to be a human being, isn't it? You'll not find anything else. So what else you can look over here on this earth? You will look on the human being. You're not going to look any other super creature in that. But the Bible reprimands for us to look in Acts chapter 6 and 7 as well. His face was like the face of an angel. When Moses came out in the presence of Lord God the Father, they couldn't see his face. Therefore, he covered his face with veil. Even when we look upon the face of my Christ, he is beautiful among the ten thousand, he is the chiefest of all. Even the description of him in Revelation 1 and 2 and 3. 
His voice, like many waters, the voice that even could divide fire asunder into two parts. We read that Psalms 29. What a beautiful chapter is that. If you spend time with the Lord of a God, your face will be like the face of an angel. That could be a better expression for this world to know, apart from looking each other faces without having the word of the Lord of a God in you. So here on this earth, you have only human beings. So what do you worry? How do you worry? You worry only to impress the human beings. If you love to impress the human beings, it's as good as using rice and dal. The caption for rice will be human excreta. The caption for dal will be your own urine. And you love to fear men. If I were to fear men, he says in Galatians 1.10, I won't have been born slave of God the Father. The present Christendom failure is that they're not able to take out the log from their own eyes. That's nothing but failure in preparing for Lord's battle. That's nothing but, for example, Christ my Lord, 30 years for 3 years of ministry. How many years of your ministry you have been prepared to do the work of the Lord of a God on this earth? Just an overnight you get a vision or a dream and you say a call for the ministry and you think you can be better enough by reading some things and giving your own prejudiced conceptions of interpretations? Or your denominational standards of interpretations and never coming to look what is the original language of the scriptures. Never digging the truth in the original languages of the word of the Lord of a God. And you think you are really doing great things to God. That's why the word says for us, you hypocrite. And it says, Protoss first, cast out the way how you cleanse out your stomach like the Human excreta washes out every day, cast out that sheer ruts of your thinking. You cannot stand with that sheer ruts of your thinking. For that cause, he says, daily carry your cross and follow my Christ. For that cause, he teaches to us, meditate upon the word of the Lord of our God day and night, what men think. Because he teaches for us in the same Psalm 719 in verse number 24. Thy testimonies are for sure, O Lord, and they are my counselors. The testimonies of the Lord of a God. If Stephen was shined like the face of an angel, if Moses had such kind of an appearance, the people couldn't see his face and he put his veil, covered his face with veil. But we have now done well ministry. That is something new for us in the churches, moving from glory to glory. Then how much more we should believe upon such testimonies rather than going to idiotic concepts of the world and believe that we can go for such and such standards on this earth and make up yourself to be shining enough by putting upon your makeup set before the TV. And you know what is this, dear brethren? As long as you reject to come back and dig and spend time in the presence of Lord God the Father and be available to look that your relationship is with the Creator and not and never with the creature or the creation. As long as you fail to impress the Creator, so long you will be minding on this earth to look the details of life and you will be feared to impress only this man, not and never the word of the Lord our God. Therefore, he says, the fear in this world. And Lord God, the Holy Spirit pens those words for us in Psalms 34 verse number 9. The fear of Yahweh. We need to learn them. It is using while you are here on this earth, while you are here on this world. And if you truly fear while you are expressing in this world that Matthew 10 we read in verse number 36 to till number 42. You deny my word before this sinful and adulterous generations, then I will deny you. If you reject my word, if you don't confess my word before the sinful and adulterous generation, then I will also reject you before the Father. And the word which we have to learn there, it is that nothing but the world has been called in the mind of Christ as we look to be the people, adulterous and sinful generations. And you want to impress this adulterous and sinful generations? But we are something new in the church age. We are called as kinekatesis, spiritual species in the Lord. And now what is that something new we have? Before the foundation of the world, He has chosen you to be holy and blameless. 
for the Israelites he chose them right from the belly womb he says in Isaiah 49 1 but for us in Ephesians 1 4 through 6 he says before the foundation of the world I have chosen you to be for me to be holy as I am holy <laughs> and you know what we do we shall continue that after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great pallid wonders of the word of the Lord of our God which we need to dig and take every day the privacy of your priesthood by the confession of your sins through rebound because in Numbers 3.10 we read a great caution of warning for us anything that which is defiled cannot come or alien that could alien that is which cannot come to the altar of the Lord God if there is anything that is of an alien which is coming the word of the Lord of our God teaches to us better put to death so we shall not be aliens while reading the word of the Lord of our God but rather being under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit using the privacy of our priesthood lest confess our sins let, let, let us confess our sins lest we be into the hands of greater judgment before the Lord by confession of our sins through rebound in the privacy of our priesthood given to us we shall continue a passage in Jeremiah 44 and from there on come along though Lord God calls us to be holy as is holy yet the determined counsel of mankind in his behavioral patterns what he thinks he need to do he will do it without having the right and true fear of Yahweh we shall look and learn that from one verse of Jeremia 44 after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of the word of the Lord our God infinitely divine Holy Father once again being thankful for this one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of your glory Father, the world is yet to know the life which you have given to us, which you have to manifest besides that the power that is exudes authority given to us in making disciples of all the nations. So, Father, as we go and study these things, so that they could understand what a mannerism of love you have bestowed upon us, yet what a mannerism of rebellion as mankind we are bestowing upon you or paying back unto you, O Lord. Help us to judge from this verse and understand with your proper exegesis, Lord, to enlighten our mind to realize that we are nothing worth yet in grace you have come to bestow your true life for us help us a lot to be faithful for your calling and to understand that we are more than conquerors to overcome and we are O oh Lord thy bond slaves and thy prisoners like an unprofitable slaves doing the work so father as we're going to show you these things we pray Lord God the Holy Spirit could enlighten and challenge us by this message in Christ's name we pray father amen the greatest and unique thing given for us on this earth as pilgrimage trip to have fellowship with that great Lord God the Father is nothing but his infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of our God. No matter how many people may come together to put for you in their reasonings of honey, honey is not accepted before the altar of the Lord. Honey is nothing but human mankind thinking. The thing that is acceptable is what is absolutely spiritual to the core. And that's what this great ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, given to us. In spite of your grieving and squelching and waxing, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, yet, Lord God, the Father in heaven has designed those who truly believe in my Christ, they should walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, under the great convicting ministry, Aglanco ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because if we don't fear and obey to the word of the Lord of our God on this earth, then there is nothing you will truly fear on this earth. You may think you can have a fear towards your father or your mother or your parents or XYZ. All those things are nothing. You have to first fear the word of the Lord of our God. We have to not just fear, but we need to have a trembling fear before the presence of Lord God the Father. But here in Jeremiah chapter 44, we shall look up to what extent a man, what he thinks in his mind, he will continually perform that. Because in the KJV, we don't find, though the translation has changed the words, for example, saying that surely perform. The words in the Hebrew is, that is asa asa that is stronger than single word as the way christ our lord of our god uses verily verily for truth for truth so here when we have to look the construction of these words when it is emphasizing the way how a man has been absolutely determined in his thinking to offer his sin or to lustful patterns to be always catered number one rather than fearing and obeying the great and unique word of the Lord our God. So dear brethren, first understanding the verse which is so much essential in verse number 23. Here we have here certain steps how a mankind is. He say here for us, 
because you have burned incense and because you have sinned against the Lord and you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord nor walked in his law nor in his statutes nor in his testimonies therefore the evil this evil is happened unto you at this day so here we need to look what is the sin that is against the Lord in John 16 8 we read of sin because they did not believe in my Christ that is about the church age but when we come over here applying for the believers already being believers with the, the case study for us or the ensamples for us from the Israelites as well as the Judah what we called Jerusalem or Judah whatever it may be they have sinned the Hebrew word for sin is chata and this word is very much essential for us to expose because here chata it just doesn't mean for us the way how we shall be called to miss the mark but here it is something more which we need to understand because it says for us in verse number 23 what we are reading you have sinned and this is nothing but to miss your path of duty and right this is just one part of the word what is been what it is been translated or to cause for you to induce sin not just to miss the mark but you are missing your path of duty and right besides that you are also missing by that you are coming upon your guilt and condemnation and you are being called in the way to pay the penalty of sin therefore he uses to induce the sin so here we need to understand how these people they have come for the standards of missing the mark how they have been induced the sin, ignorance and arrogance of Bible doctrine. Early ones they would go to pay their price of copair in the standards of early ones their sins to be sacrificed or to be given as the priest would stand up in the Old Testament times in the ark of the temple of the Lord early ones the high priest going for um copair of the day but if they would be not available if their sins were not been cleansed the blood mark wouldn't be changed as white therefore they knew this this year they are paying back their sins they have been remembering in their mind about their sins but when we come in Christ sin is no longer an issue it is a settled matter now we have something great we need to walk in the peace of the Lord of our God because sin is no longer an issue and you do sin either by thought word or deed it has to be in your standards of your inoperative power of the word of the Lord our God by not believing it that's it therefore now you have been occupied to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Father understanding the demands of him and performing what he was supposed to do with his son on this earth this is our criteria now but in the past dispensation it was not so early once they would go and they would be having in their mind to bear about their sins but Christ once and for all on the cross has cleansed the sin not only of the past the present or even to the future but rather he demands you to be occupied with him with the person and remember of and remembrance of him you should glorify God the Father by having that word of the Lord of our God in you that's what our solution is now but this sin what they have induced if ever you are a believer having your psychological pattern to check up if you may think in your own mind that you're really worshiping the Lord God then you can do that but the things what happened for us as per Proverbs 23 7 teaches to us as a man thinker so is you are not been coming to look the seriousness of a power given to you so so what you do you think it's not possible for me to come to church it's not possible because I'm not a saint it's not possible for me to be because to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because already the idiotic morons in the church age who teach to you that you're not been indwelled by the Trinity you are not been there in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they think they are one step ahead by talking in tongues and they have been sanctified and kept apart and they think they are far above than the saints but the word of the Lord of God says in the church age every believer before the foundation of the world I have called them in in Christ sanctified to be saint in first Corinthians chapter 1 where we read the positional sanctification every believer is been titled as a saint if ever you have your name you can just use saint and your name over there because that's the position for us in Christ we are something far above and superior so we cannot occupy ourselves to induce such kind of a sins in our mind therefore he says you have sinned against the Lord and this word sin how much they have been negligent about the right duty and the right 
right path where they need to walk. The same thing has been continuing today. And today, if ever you look, they have sinned so much that they are not able to remove their own log from their eyes. They are not able to come back and continue as being true believers in Christ. And But rather, they are inculcating themselves to see they are pure, but in return, they haven't even sought out their log to be removed. And they want to cleanse the people who are having chaff in their eyes. Therefore, if an unbeliever would come back and look and say, first go and check your home, first go and check your affairs, first go and check your family matters, first go and check your things, then we would be the people to be absolutely ashamed to the core. Therefore, dear brethren, this word, chata, to induce sin. Do you know how about this man? This man, the man whom Lord God the Father made in his own image, he's been so stubborn enough because he's not having circumcised ears to look into the word of the Lord of a God, neither to have ears of understanding in his mind, but rather this man has come up with such kind of a great chatter nature of sin to induce himself because he finds pleasure eh, to impress man and to have details of life as number one priority, not to never to remember his creator. The great wisdom man in the book of Ecclesiastes, he teaches to us for us that while you are in youth, remember the Lord God. While you are in youth, take up your cross and follow my Christ so that this is the yoke and the burden given to you and he realizes in Ezekiel chapter 31 verses 18 and 19 and he teaches to us unaccustomed to the yoke what a word it is for us to learn unaccustomed to the yoke that should be in Jeremiah not Ezekiel the way the word meant to say for us lo 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 lama there were not 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 for lama mantano plus didasco the two principles what the right work of the pastor teacher is as a prime man didascale to go back and train you up every day in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit in the preciousness of his word and make you to understand you have been given besides the true eternal life the power which the world is yet to know and we need to continue in that power so that being under the fellowship of such great power we need to be the people as dictators rather than becoming the people where these men are thinking that they should be subjection to the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the authorities of this world but rather Ephesians 3 8 through 11 teaches to us through the church teach to them through the church teach to them what is the manifold wisdom of God unsearchable wisdom of Christ and that's what we are and that's the privilege for us, only for us while we are in the church age. This privilege was not been given in the past, neither will be given for anyone in the future. Now we have to understand the church is a university, the pastor teacher is the dean, and every believer is a professor to the angels to teach the right word of the Lord of a God by their practical way of exhibition, not just to become talking man or making sound in an empty vessel. Therefore, Lord of God says in Acts chapter 1, what you preach, the first thing what you need to do, it has to be a practical life. There is no need for you to remember. Already if you are doing that, you know, if you have been accustomed to the day, you know very well how you do. You wake up, you brush up your teeth, you go for bath or you do X, Y, Z till the time you go back to sleep. That's been accustomed to you. There is no need, you need to go back and memorize them. The same way what Christ my Lord my rock gave a principle for us in Acts chapter 1. What you're doing that you preach. The problem is you haven't become disciple. The problem is you haven't known the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and given you this bona fide gift with proper preparation and exegeting the word of the Lord of a God and making disciples, joining them as disciples, making them to grow up as grammatias, and in return making them to become like the Creator who made them. That's the power we need to exercise. So that when you have been making disciples for the time, they will in return go and make disciples of all the nations. And whenever you look an unbeliever, you need to think is a Disciple from a Christ and I need to make him up not just as a believer but disciple 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 And that's the purpose of the church today We have been given something great and unique And that power has to be manifested to this world And why do you worry your enemy? If you worry you need to worry only about two things the flesh and the world because the old sin nature constantly pops up in your mind to neglect the word of the Lord of a God, to reject the word of my Christ. The world is already pulling you to have pleasure, thinking that this world is enough. But for a believer, the world is not enough. In the power of such one, what Lord God the Father has designed for us in eternity past, if you live the true eternal life, enjoying your true worth, setting to the point, making manifest your moderation to all men, because Lord God is near. The world is not enough for your witnessing. 
The world itself is not enough. You have been given over here to shake the heaven and the earth. And that too with the proper word of the Lord our God. Therefore, dear brethren, chatter. What did they do in Jeremiah 44, verse 23? They missed the mark. They failed. They sinned. They forfeited. They endangered. And they went along to expiate. And they were into the standards of seducing and inducing themselves guilty and condemnation. And therefore, the solution is to purify from uncleanliness. And that's what the most important word for sin in the Old Testament. It is very good as similar to Greek harmatano. But we need to understand that things pertaining to chatter expresses the idea of being off target and getting lost. That is what in simple words to miss the mark. And every believer doesn't know what is the target. If you would know what is the purpose of your life alive being kept on this earth, you would realize and you look upon your call and you would stand up yourself to look up to what extent we are sinning. You don't have proper vision. Neither you are understanding what is your mission on this earth. And that's what these people are today in the present Christendom, calling themselves to be pastor teachers, don't know what for they have been sent on this earth. Looking upon the time, you should be communicators of Bible doctrine, but they themselves are not communicators of Bible doctrine. How could they understand what is the purpose of my Christ sending you with this power, with the power of this word of the Lord of our God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit above all, given you that one special bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to male believers alone, not for female. You forgot that power, you forgot that target. The main idea of this word chatta is meant to say you are falling off and that's what it meant to say for us. The main concern is that you are being off target. You are out of target. And that's what these people are today developing their minds yet to be out of target on this earth. And therefore dear brethren, since you are out of target you are getting lost. And the furthermore, we need to understand that, dear brethren, it is coming up short of his goal. What is his goal? And those who love me, they will have life, he said. And those who hate me, they will love death, he said, in Proverbs 8, 36. The goal for us is loving Bible doctrine, witnessing the truth till the last breath. And if Lord God the Father would, if we haven't completed his work, we would pray like the way how Joshua prayed. Sun and moon stop there itself. The battle is intense. I want to finish this. In the same manner, we would ask, Lord God the Father, turn my one day into thousand years, O oh Lord. I want to fight Lord's battle. And if we would look in that manner, this two thousand years are nothing just but twenty days before the Lord. And we would ask, Lord, make the sun and moon to stop itself the way how Joshua prayed. We would ask, Lord God the Father, make my life to be one day is equal to thousand years. I want to expand that. Because I want to fight Lord's battle. And not to engage in the details of this life. Though the world may think. You are 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120 and close the matter. But we will think. 6,000 years back. 1440 BC. What was the word of the Lord of our God? Have they sinned? And at Christ's time, how they rejected. Church age, where are we going now? We cannot get lost. If ever we would pray to Lord God the Father, the word says in Proverbs 8, 36, Loving me, you will love life. Hating me, you will love death. You don't want to love death? For what? We're rejecting the word of the Lord our God and you want to have a big life for you on this earth. What does the word teach for us? You love me, you will have a great life. If you hate me, you're going to lose this. And when you will manifest the power after you die. Therefore he says how much dull of hearing you are in Hebrews 10 verses 34 and following. No tears you have become. And therefore he goes on to preach for us. How many days more you want to be still lukewarm in Revelation 3? Come out. Either be hot or cold. 
Come back and take the salve from the Lord of our God, not for the salve of this man. Open up your eyes, look into the intense stage of angelic conflict. Why you want to be lost? But rather manifest your power given to you in the true spiritual life ever designed for us in this church age. What a great and unique thing we have in this church age to perform. What a solid thing we have to do for the Lord of our God. And yet, we are considering to lose our life. The reason is very simple, because you are out of target and thus you are lost. But the word of the Lord of our God says for us, you cannot be short of your goal, what I have given to you. Everything has been given for you. And everything has been asking in the standards wherewith it has to be divine holiness. Nothing to be added from your side. It is my program, I sponsor. You just come entering, believing in my Christ, and then you walk as I say for you to walk, not to be prejudiced mind to sin. When you're off of the target, you're going to lose. You're going to lose up your true spiritual life. You're going to lose up your true physical life as well on this earth. Because you will die like the common death of this man who are unbelievers. When you're not known the true purpose of your life on this earth, you will not understand. Up to what extent, Lord God, the Father in heaven has designed for us these true standards. You will die the true life which has to be in Christ, living it out, and you will die like common men. Do you want to be so? You are sanctified and kept apart for Lord's work. You should be available to the Lord's glory to say, Lord, the Lord's battle is intense, Father. I want to change my one day into thousand years because your battle is intense. When I've given me such kind of a great enlightenment in Proverbs 9:3, if you would ask out of if you'd ask thousand things in that even one I'm not able to answer, Lord. Teach me, make me up to carry that yoke, train me up to become Lamad, teach me to look into the standards of that Allah. Help me to carry my yoke, O oh Lord, while I'm in youth. Accomstered me, make me to carry this burden. Did you ever pray for that? What for you pray? Your spiritual enlightenment? Not even that. You pray, Lord, safeguard me today. <laughs> you pray, Lord, I want to impress other people. And why you want to be safe? You want to have many people in your pulpits to stand and to give witness in your podium wherever you put your programs. Oil business, kerchief business. And the way how these people, which they call testimony, I call it as a dog which is barking, bragamane. Not even in accord with the word of the Lord of a God of a true change of mind. And that these people are happy today to continue in their chatter. You know what is the resultant of that chatter? You will become hard hearted to continue your process the way how those men rejected the counsel of Jeremiah those days. Today as well we shall find people rejecting the true counsel and the true word of the Lord of our God. In fact, indeed, many of the areas which we have to expound in the original languages of the scriptures with the wisdom what Apostle Paul has written in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, haven't been exposed yet. Each and every word. Each and every teaching in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is so far unique and great so that when you unlock the scriptures, you could unlock even joining them with the Hebrew standards of he the Hebrew standards of Jeremiah teaching, Isaiah teaching, including the prophets teachings of the minor and major together. You can unlock them together. You can make them an alignment and show forth from old and new. That's what he says in Matthew 13, 52. From old and new, getting something new. You know what a privilege it is for us. You know what a great standards to serve the true Lord. Dear brethren, we have something great. We have really something great. To unlock the scriptures, to display the array of his beautiful glory. To make manifest his attributes to the world. What a great things we serve in Christ. We have so many great and unique things in the Bible, dear brethren. When you unlock in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, from the standards of Apostle Paul's wisdom, 
what we call Second Peter 3, 15 through 17. You will truly know what a great things he has written and kept for us. So that you can understand now up to what extent we are missing the mark. Up to what extent they were in the past rejecting the word of the Lord of our God. And in the present Christendom up to what extent we have been given this great privilege to do the will and the work of Lord God the Father in heaven. You haven't understood. Therefore, we look over here, he says, when you're off of the target, it meant to say you're going to lose. Therefore, you're coming short of the Lord's goal, which has kept for us to love the Lord of our God and you will love your life. And if you hate the word of the Lord of our God, you're going to love death. That's very simple. And blessed is the one who cometh to wait and to listen the word of the Lord of our God every day in the pulpits so that they can understand what is more important on this earth than the details of life where they give the priority number one for this life. Dear brethren, he says, your true life what I have designed. Therefore, Christ our Lord of our God says, life is more than the meat what you wear, what you eat and what you wear, the clothes what you think, the raiment what you wear, more than that is this life because we have to do the work of the Lord and manifest the power power of Lord God the Father in this completed can of scripture and through that power our exclusive authority given for us we need to go and make disciples of all the nations that's the power given to us and that's more than the meat therefore Christ my Lord my rock says in John 4 34 teaching to the point for us that my meat is to do Lord's will and my raiment what I'm wearing is nothing but the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath he was born in the spirit till the time on the cross being left for the fourth phrase my god my god eli eli lama sabatane the first rocket you're referring to god the father the second rocket you're referring to my christ our lord god the holy spirit therefore we read in second corinthians 5 he who was not sin was made sin on behalf of us so that we might gain now the righteousness of christ created to our account so that we could call now him under that great spirit of adoption calling Abba Father by the blessing of Abraham which could come through Christ to all the Gentile nations where there is no Jew, no Greek, no male, no female all can come to the power of God exercising his will, becoming like Christ conforming to his image and going and making disciples of all the nations and that's what we have been given today And how many days more you want to reject and love death? If you reject the word of the Lord of our God to take in today, doesn't the word say, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh from the mouth of my Christ or the remata declaration of Bible doctrine which could come every day? And what do you think you can survive? But the details of life throw that out. You're not surviving because you go and meet a doctor. You're not surviving because you're going and meeting and doing such and such food, a diet or your exercise. You're surviving purely for the counsel of Lord God to do his will. And if he has kept you alive tomorrow, be thankful to the Lord God and ask, Father, so many days I have been ignorant in this world to have a right fear of you, to manifest your true fear on this earth. And so many days on this earth, O oh Lord, I have rejected thee. Therefore, I end up in slavery, my Lord. But now, O oh Lord, I do not want to like any good thing from you. I want to have everything from you. I will manifest that fear in this world. I will manifest the world to understand what is the right fear and what is the power we have when we fear Lord God the Father in heaven and we can do the things of God the Father in heaven to the highest. I will make them to understand this, O oh Lord. So grant me graciously thy grace and help me to do thy will, Father. That's what your prayer should be. Because we are still in the regions of Chata to the core. And what a pain it would be for us when we read. How much pain would have been gone through anthropopathism to my Christ. During the time of Jeremiah when they rejected the word of the Lord. Thus rightly called as a weeping prophet. And today we don't find men. To look into the same pain of the Lord and cry out to call you to become attentive to His Word. Dear brethren, tomorrow we will face a very tough judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't think you're kidding yourselves. 
Lord God, the Father in heaven is going to evaluate us according to his word. Therefore, we pray fellowship through thy word, O Lord, through thy word. We don't have, have any other communication like the visions of the prophets or the terms pertaining to apostles or dreams. The completed kind of scripture is enough and our reformation movement, what we bought apart from the Roman Catholicism. The Apocrypha books being thrown out, we have the 66 books, enough to know right from the beginning till to the end. Because Lord God the Father says in Isaiah 40, 18 verse number 8 and following, it is I who declare to you the entire counsel of the Lord God, the end from the beginning. From now on you can look what is your life will be facing to you tomorrow at the death. Because for example, yesterday you lost your time and your date and your value of your money. For example, you are investing some money in your trading business. And you have been given a chance again today by, recollect by recollecting back or given for you a preview what will happen tomorrow. Wouldn't you be alert for the time? And when you come back, you will understand, yesterday I lost this, today I cannot lose it because I have been shown in a preview that this and such will be the rate, such and such will be the things in the trading market, so I will be alert and I will be first. It's as good as leaking the question paper for you. So when you have a question paper in your hand, before your examination, being prepared for all those answers, will you not come and answer? That's how simple it is when he says, right from the end, I'm going to declare to you your beginning. So you have your question paper in your hand already. And that question paper, he says, go and make disciples. Those who honor me, I will honor them. Those who be the way, the word that I was on this earth, becoming the living word, becoming the written word. When I open up your tongue, as we talk in Colossians 4, 6 with grace, in 1 Peter 4, 16, the divine oracles of Bible doctrine, we have to be. I will honor them back, he said. Those who overcome, he uses again the word. In Revelation 2 and 3, the great privilege given to us to serve the Lord our God in spirit and in biblical truth. I will make them to become pillar. I will call them to sit in the throne of my Lord. Where Satan fought for such throne. We have been given such kind of a great position. We have been given a challenge to when you overcome, you will be given that position of throne as well to sit with God the Father. The throne which Christ was. And why you worry and what you think you need. The entire program to understand by Satan. The gimmicks, the tricks, whatever it played. Taking even the one third part of the angels. Because it rebelled, it wanted to take that throne. And Lord God threw him out. That's what we read in Isaiah 14 verses 14 through 18. The great five eye wills of Satan we read there. It rebelled. And from there on it came to this cosmos diabolicus. When they have been kept the examination of the tree, Adam lost the rulership to Satan by obeying the voice of Eve rather than obeying the voice of Lord God when it was a choice for him. That's how men are. They love to do what will be an impulse in his desire. Looking upon that new woman who was in the new nakedness, he thought, and he ate that fruit, forgetting to look that it was disobeying the commandment of the Lord. Lusting over her. Impulse of your desire. And losing that authority, losing that rulership given to Satan. And Satan inculcated many things, including what we call the way how this world is looking along in the standards of this earth. That we have been exercising these idols long back because we have been here 2,000 years back. They say, no, they say 200 million years back. And all these things they have. Why? Because Satan has become the prince of the power of this air. And it went along to destroy as many as it can because Satan alone knows its time is short. We read that in Revelation 12, 9. Therefore, now as many as it can, it want to pull you back like a roaring lion into the hell. Therefore, the first strategy of Satan, see that you don't believe in Christ. If ever you believe in Christ, come back so that they shall not look into the word of the Lord our God, destroy them by giving false pastor teachers. Therefore, Revelation 2 and 3 teaches to us where the house of the Lord of our God has to be, it has become now Satan's throne. It has become Satan's copulation point to producing false pastor teachers. Because Satan's synagogue, it has turned out. Therefore, in Luke 4, 16, we read, when Christ, the Lord of God, came to that synagogue, he stood up 
And he did anagenisco, analyze and execute the word of the Lord of God. That's the failure today in our pulpits. They're not able to stand up. Why? Because they're not been prepared. As thin as, that is what to stand with strength. Because prepared, you have something to talk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because you know these people are perishing. They haven't come to know what is the right power of the word of the Lord of God. Then you know you have to stand up. Not just to follow the rituals, not just to look upon the standards of this world. To teach them what is the divine thing, what is the real thing, what Lord God the Father has inculcated for us in eternity past. Though Satan is playing such gimmicks upon gimmicks, gimmicks upon gimmicks, tricks upon tricks, it cannot come to the place what we have been today. We have been given a challenge, if we could overcome, I will make you to sit in the throne. And you know, have you ever heard the love called as jealousy? <laughs> you should realize that. What is jealousy? <laughs> if ever you love, you will understand what is that jealousy. When your loved one to whom you wanted to marry is with other woman, you will realize what is that jealousy. Satan, though it has been kept to become the personal guard of the Lord, being thrown out now because of its pride. And therefore we read that in Proverbs 6 and as well. But the structure in the Hebrew is different. Because it says, your exaltation before that you fall. And pride walketh before the fall. We have that. We shall look that tomorrow. But Satan, because of its proud, it fell. And it thought it could make something great of itself. And it took one third part of the angels with it. But for us, Christ our Lord of God says, Now, I have married to you because you are now of my own flesh. You are of my own bone because that's the church. If you could know, the first Adam had his wife through his bone. Now, the last Adam is also going to have his church through himself. Therefore, he says, I have been bought you with a great prize. And therefore, he says, anyone who would overcome, I will give them the power to become and to sit in the throne. Though Satan was thinking that it could be given, it lost its chance. And thus, when you have been given this offer, the thing which what Satan thinks is that, in a gift of jealousy, if you could look, which I should enjoy, why some other man should enjoy. So I will destroy that man. So it has a great fight upon the bride of Christ. If ever you believe in Christ, no problem, but see that they don't come to look what is the real power, what is the real potential, what is the real purpose. What great Lord God can do through their life in this flesh on this earth. Because he has said already they can trample Satan under their feet. So what is this great power? What is this great privilege? They can know better. So see that they will not come to know the truth. When they come to know the truth, the truth shall set them free. Therefore hide and obscure them from the truth. And for what that he says, send false pastor teachers, produce false pastor teachers. Let their mind be still stagnant in oil business, kerchief business, miracles, healings, tongues. But when it comes to the true issue of the word of the Lord of our God, don't give them because people will be bored to listen to the word of the Lord of our God. Induce that mind in their thinking. And why Satan hates you so much, do you know? Can you marry a baby, a small girl? You will marry to the one who is well matured enough, isn't it? Who can reason your thinking, who can be physically fit for you as well. You cannot marry a small baby or a kid. If the church doesn't grow up to become perfect and complete, as we read in Colossians 1, 18-29, to present everyone perfect and complete in the standards of Bible doctrine. If the church doesn't grow up, then how it would appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, Satan's strategy to produce false teachers, rising miracles, signs and wonders, teaching to you all, Lies to be number one priority, not exegesis. Removing the standards of what the church was established earlier, daily teaching and establishing weekly, monthly, yearly. 
communion fellowships because it wants you to be still babies. But now, dear brethren, anyone who wants to be holy, let him be holy. Anyone who wants to reject the teachings of the Holy One, let them reject. Let them love a lie, make a lie. It is your life. You are responsible for your decisions. It's your life of chatter what you are going to prove. Half of the target or out of the target, the word of the Lord of our God teaches to us. When you are out of the target, you are out, you are lost. Therefore, you are not being given that you need to become like Christ. Therefore, you don't find such teachings in the pulpits today. What you find? You find only some shirats of oratory, some great tales, fairy tales of explanations. And they think preaching is such and such, so we have to do. Who cares? After the completion of the Canon Scripture, it's exegesis. Go back and take the word and divide it accurately. Teach them so that they can be acquainted with the Lord's attributes and His glory and His work. Not with the attributes of you, not with the thinking of your denominations. Teach them what the Bible demands, not what you think you can teach them and train them up. Teach them from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. And Christ my Lord, my rock says, I shall not even let go iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera. But you want to let go the things pertaining to Bible doctrine in this world and teach them lies upon lies. Be careful, dear brethren. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. And Lord God the Father knows very well why he has chosen us in this church age. He knows us very well. We will be fighting Lord's battle provided when we are passing the examination. The way how we looked upon the examination of David and called him now to fight the Lord's battle over Goliath. And he says, it is I who fight through you. You be ready prepared. Sanctify yourselves to look. And do the will of God the Father. Be constantly mindful about that. Though the prince of the power of this air could sit along with its agents, the departments, part A, part B, part C, part D, principalities, powers, rulers and authorities. While you were, you meditate upon the precepts what I've given to you. Continue that. Therefore, the psalmist says, Thy word is a testimony unto me, O Lord. They are my counselors. They are the one who guide me. Through thy word, O Lord, I have been more wise than my enemy in Psalm 719, verses 97 through following. Then my teachers, I have greater wisdom because thy word has trained me up. Because thy word has written for me to look, converting the soul, making wise the simple. When we have such kind of a counseling, the counselors are nothing but the word of the Lord of our God for us. Why we still go for chatter? And you want to be still chatter? Day by day you will enjoy chastisement from the Lord. The Hebrew word is chatter. So here we look, dear brethren. It is coming short of the goal. It is the breach. It is a serious breaking down of personal relationship with God the Father and not respecting Lord's rights in our life and sinning against Lord God and falling short of God's standards. And this is what the people they were during the time of Jeremiah chapter 44 verses 23. And from where did they fall? Half the word of the Lord of our God in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit records for us is that because you have burned incense, because you have sinned against the Lord. We are starting with sin, chatter. And what is that chatter? Breaking Lord God's standards, falling short of the target, what has given for us. Here we look, when they have sinned, number one, what did they do? They did not listen to the voice of Yahweh. What is sin in the sight of the Lord? Not listening to the voice of Yahweh, number one. And number two, not listening to the law. What the word of the Lord of God that time existed, Torah. Not listening to the words what has been given for us to statutes. The choke, the commandments of Bible doctrine, prescriptions. 
You have sickness, you go to a doctor, you give you prescription. So he says, they haven't heard my voice, that's the sin. They haven't known what is the law I have given to them through my prophet Moses. That's the sin. They haven't come to look what is the standards of chalk. What are the prescription of me that I am demanding from them? He don't stop there. He says, they haven't been obeying to the testimonies. And the word testimony is for us. What I asked them to do, the people rejected. I showed them what was my wrath. And when the people obeyed to do, I showed them my love. That's what the word testimony is all about. And yet, dear brethren, the Hebrew word is edut, which is called as a witness evidence. Though such kind of a great things happened when Jonah came to tell them 40 days and then out. He did not show them any sign of wonder. The things what will happen to look into evidence, Queen of Sheba came to inquire. And when she knew, she says, What I have heard and seen, they are not even half before thee, O Lord. What we are looking now, Deuteronomy 29, 29, the things that are for the earth, these are half, not even half, that are required for you to be on this earth, they have been given, but when you go back home, you have many things to do. That's what we find in 2 Corinthians 13, when he says, a man in flesh or out of flesh, no not, but a man in Christ, went along to see the Rimata declarations, he said, those things shall not be revealed, even when Baruch, the way how he wrote the word of the Lord of God and the dictation of Jeremiah being burnt off. He added many more things we read in the book of Jeremiah, not being taught, not being revealed. And yet, we are not interested to look. The things that have been needed for this earth, like Queen of Sheba, to inquire in depth and detail. And what you are inquiring in depth and detail is only half. When you go back to heaven, you have much more things to learn. The things that are for me on this earth, he says, they are for the earth. The things that are there in the heaven, they are for the heaven. Jonah told them the word. Queen of Sheba came to inquire the word. Though there were evidences, yet the people in Matthew, they asked for my Christ. What is the sign of the Lord? <laughs> no sign would be given for you except Jonah and Queen of Sheba. Except that widow of Zarephath and the Nineveh, the man who came, Naaman, they cannot be healed. They obeyed the voice of the Lord. They looked upon the obedience of the Lord God's glory testimony and they stood for the glory of the Lord. But he says the sin chata, missing the mark, the reasons, number one, not listening to the voice of Yahweh, the Rimata declaration of the pastor teacher from their law, Bible, choke, necessary, day by day, enough is the evil you have for that day. Therefore, today, what is the prescription given for you? Carry your cross and follow my Christ, that's the chalk. And those who reject the evidences you will find every day in your own home. People not being happy with that because they haven't done the work of the Lord. So they pay, they, they pay and they fail to do the work of the Lord. Therefore, misery upon misery for them. They think in this life, this is more important than Bible doctrine. At the end of their life, they will realize what they lost. And they will come to know what mannerism of misery they have been paid. And dear brethren, you need to look upon these things to the core. The four things, voice, the pastor teacher being prepared faithful in the exegesis, law, completed Bible, prescription day by day for you, the prescribed portion, testimonies, if you reject, if you don't come to love the word of the Lord of our God, it says for us you will love death. You will find that evidence, we find in our own eyes, youth perishing without any reasons being put to death. So that the others at least should get alert. These are the testimonies you need to look. These are the evidences you need to understand. But you say, no Lord, we don't want to look, we don't want to understand. Don't worry, you will pay for it to the full. 
looking upon your life without exercising this great power given to you in the power of the true eternal life. You look as if you are half dead without doing the work of the Lord of our God. You cannot be alive. There is no true life in you, said the Lord. In John 6, when he says, if you don't partake in my elements, there is no true life. He demands to remember this all the days of your life. But you all are not interested. If not, you would truly fear Lord God and honor his word above his name on this earth. And don't worry, if you don't honor, you may think you will not lose anything. But at the judgment seat of Christ, you will know what have you lost. Therefore, he says, they did not listen to the voice, Shamma, to hear and obey. To the law, to the choke demands of their word, to the adet evidences. And they went not in the path what you said. What a pain it would be for us. The path what he says for us, hear and obey the voice of the Lord of our God, that is daily Bible teaching. Search diligently what the word says. Go back and know your prescription every day. Come back and look what are the testimonies of Bible doctrine so that you could be one among the testimony for Christ on this earth as a witness of truth rather than being as the people who disobeyed the word of the Lord of our God and die sin unto death. Therefore he says, so the evil befell, that is what encountered they met as the day this is. Yet such things happened. We look for a preview in Jeremiah 44, 25. Using twice in the Hebrew. They say, to execute, we shall execute the woes of us what we would. And to, live, to libate our libations. To carry out, we shall carry out. And to execute, we shall execute what we owe to the Queen of Heaven. Because man is interested to have temporary solution to the standards of his thinking rather than what the word of the Lord of our God has given for us. In Isaiah 44, 25, we shall look that as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to understand them tomorrow. But now, to realize the power given for us that the world is awaiting for the manifestation of the power, we read that in Romans 8, 18. Why is it we still go back and consider our life to be as ruined rather than expressing the power wherewith we have been called to execute this great life in this church age. Therefore, dear brethren, we have been given something wherewith the previous dispensation or in the past dispensation could ever enjoy. We have been given with such great boldness to stand in His presence in this great Iskun authority to manifest because of that great exousia authority given to us so that whatever we talk as he says, the words pertaining to Bible doctrine, to whom the word of the Lord our God came, they became the sons of God. Keeping these things in mind, we need to exercise the true eternal life power to these people and make them to understand what a great calling we have in this church age, to make them to realize what a great purpose we are in this church age, to make them to know without Christ, without his power, on this earth for a believer, he has nothing else to obey because he has only one thing, to fear the Lord God. And he has that great fear, then the elevations of this earth, whatever they may be, they are nothing because they all need to pay an account to the Lord by kneeling down in his presence. But we have been given that great power wherewith he says the heaven and the earth wherewith in his word he says for us will vanish off but his word will abide forever and saying to us that great word if you have a mustard seed of faith if you ask that mountain to remove from the path it will be thrown out so why do you worry you have been given such grand of a power by but the great thing you need to realize is you have been given such true eternal life as well that true eternal life with that power the world is yet to know and we have to prove in this world we have been given that power providing provided we make along disciples that they should be our witnesses and if you are still rebellion like the way how the Israelites were in Jeremiah 44 23 not listening to the word of the Lord our God neither understanding the prescriptions of Bible doctrine not able to realize the testimonies of the truth then God help you because much has been given for us and much has been expected from us in the fear of this world Fearing Yahweh, we have to manifest that we have truly loved Lord God the Father in heaven. Then yet, why we go back for chatter and miss the mark? 
Dear brother, and think over these issues. Life is too short, yet the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. So, dear brother, and we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit could lead us to the praise of His glory in understanding that Isaiah 44, 23, up to what extent we are, because they said the things pertaining to the rebellion in Isaiah 44, 25, that to fulfill they will fulfill, to execute they will execute, to perform they will perform their woes. And that's the thinking in their mind to reject Lord's glory. But yet we should be the people if the things pertaining to Satan and its work, they are so much determined to have double times using the word to perform they will perform, then how much more we should be? We should be thousand times greater than that. I've been come over here to manifest the power of Lord God the Father in heaven. I will manifest it. Therefore, my Christ, my Lord, my rock says for us, you can do greater things than me. I have come to destroy the works of the devil and he did it by walking in the light and not in darkness. Let us also walk in the light as children of light and do greater things than my Christ what he did for us on this earth, establishing his power, establishing to make known to every believer they can trample Satan under their feet, but, but first growing up as disciples, joining as disciples, growing up as grammatias, and making to become like the Father in heaven, getting from old and new the combination of the things pertaining to Bible doctrine, producing every day something new, and renewing their minds to love the word of the Lord of a God, and above all, renewing the standards to understand the great and true and unique purpose of Bible doctrine, what we look, which is nothing but dear brethren for us to be, like Christ on this earth, manifesting His word to the highest. So dear brethren, this power has been given for us. This thinking has been given for us. Then why you want to reject? Why do you not want to understand this great reality in the word? So understand these things, but look upon the great word of the Lord our God given for us and make known manifestation of this power by making disciples of all the nations. So we have that power to be very strong enough than the way how these people, they thought, performing they shall perform, but we have to perform thousand times greater than what these people, they thought in their minds. Think about this issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, could enlighten and challenge us by these messages day by day. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to care so thon lagan. Herald the word in season or out of season, because the Dharma to my witnesses where you have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses in Grand Trinity, followed by the Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry besides nature, the entire Anjali Kosh will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, so that you might understand what is the purpose of the Lord by daily coming to carry a cross and following my Christ to the praise of his glory. And for the pastor teachers, it is Kerusatan Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season because of this great work on this earth to make disciples by manifesting his power on this realm. We have with us the indwelling trinity followed by Bible in our hands. And why we worry? We need to worry only one thing, to meditate upon his thoughts and to look upon his prescription day by day in understanding the great will of Lord's glory. We read that in Jeremiah 44, 23, the voice, the teacher, then the Bible, then the prescription, and then the evidences who obeyed what they got, the people did not obey what they got. So we have that as an ensemble for us. Why we fear, lest fear, if ever we miss the mark, but rather look upon the target continuously, looking unto Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, as he was one mediator between God and man. He is our captain. Let's follow him and look unto his work to the praise of his glory. Think about these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique relationship we have with you, O Lord, through the word. Father, we pray that each and every word of thee through proper exegesis and proper categories of the word, determining thy truth to 
inbuilt in us day by day to the purpose of your glory. Help us, O Lord, to stabilize thy power to manifest to this world, the great power followed in this great eternal life given to us. So, Father, we commit everything into the mighty hands, search us diligently, and see if there is an offense way. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth, nothing but only for thy glory to the highest. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. Help us, O Lord, to strengthen us more and more for thy work, for thy will, in thy divine holiness. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. Amen.